So here I am out in Hawaii again and look at this, this is just amazing. This is what you get in Hawaii, it's so humid and so fantastic growing conditions. You can have avocados grow in your own garden. But this isn't the reason why I'm here for, this, I've been here learning all about different beehives, learning all about bees, beekeeping and basically enjoying myself having a bit of a break. <laughs> beautiful Hawaiian queen here. She's such an amazing layer. Where'd she go? So let's take her off and we'll put this frame in that. There she, she is. I'm gonna put this one over there. So this is the second frame of brood and there's a third one there, look at that. This is amazing. And what's this one got on it? Brood as well with its hatching. That's just amazing. What a brilliant queen. And our small high beetles. Yeah, but they're all herded into here, look. Mm -hmm. Caught in the shop cloth. They do a great job. Yeah. This is the queen that we just got. Yeah. She certainly seems to love laying into those frames. This is plenty of space to lay. I'm going to move this one to the middle. Okay. So we've just seen that beautiful queen, Alicia, in that Apimea hive here. But this is an Apimea nook, isn't it? Yes, Apimea seven frame nook. It can be, has its division board that you can put three frames on each side. So it'd be three and three. Okay. Or seven frame nook. So you've got entrances this side and entrances the other side if you wish. Yes, that and side. you can completely close them down. Yeah. And I use them for standard hives in addition to nooks because you can just put the super right on top and then you have a full they're deeps. Yeah. It's a deep deep frames, but they're So not. Th this these actually do take these are the Apame frames those are. They're the Apame handy frame, which is a plastic frame that's really I love it. You pull it the you pull it apart and you just put the wax foundation in the center yeah. and snap it back together. And that's that's a really simple way to um, put wax foundation in your frame. Yeah. Or you can actually, if you just like to let them build calm, the way that it was injected molded, there's um, just a lip of plastic at the top. Yeah. And they will build their own comb if you like to do the natural comb. Yeah. You can see here there's... Um uh, well, first of all, I'm going to say we've got okay. these uh, these standard um, frames of Langsroth here, haven't we? The standard Correct. Langsroth mediums, aren't they? Which fit in the same hive, which is a great selling point, isn't it? Yeah, they both fit. Yeah, but we've actually just taken two frames of brood from this colony, haven't we? And given it to another one over here that was weak. And here it is here, which is already bolstered now. So that's another stronger one now that's just been given a new queen as well. So this one we've given space to because the problem is they're so prolific here and we have so much honey coming in all the time. Unless you're constantly removing honey and constantly giving them the space, they're going to swarm, aren't they? They, they will do Unless it. you get a queen like that, which is terrific. But look at that, but pollen. Look at that pollen. Yeah, it's terrific. This is what you have to watch in it for the small hive beetle. Because if you have a colony, I believe, here... If the colony is, becomes queenless and it yeah. has pollen in it, it's going to get slimed out. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And you can see that we use... I was just talking about this before, before I changed my subject. We have these shop towels. And the great thing is... The bees are becoming, what well, seem to be becoming quite aware of the small hive beetles. And when you go in to the colony, often they, they herd the bees to the back of the colony or to a place where on top of the frames where the bees, where the small hive beetle can't get at the, at the frames. So if you put this shop towel in, they actually get stuck in it. And you can see they're alive, these small hive beetle, but it's one of the ways. It's not the way, but it's one of the ways of controlling some of the small hive beetle. Also, this Apimea hive has a plastic uh, shim, is that right? I have it off the It has a metal shim. A metal shim. I don't have it installed. Not, in not in this one, but a lot of them have. And it means that the, the small hive beetle can't get around. They can't literally walk over the top of the, 
the, the shim to get at the hive and they fall down onto the tray and then they have to crawl out. So it's another thing we do here, but small hive beetles are probably as much of a problem here as Varroa. Small hive beetle is more of a problem because we have Varroa resistant queens. Absolutely. Kilo bees. Thanks to um, the USDA Project Apis and Arista Bee Research and David Thomas, Hawaiian Island Honey Company. You generally think these uh, seven frames are a really good size to work with here, do you? I think they're great because, well, me, just for the, they're still heavy, but seven frames compared to 10 frames when you're lifting it, I can, I can still do it by myself. Yeah. And also you've got the ability to close down if you want to reduce the entrances to help a colony that's weaker. Um, this one's only got two on one side, so this is probably why it's so doing so well. And we haven't seen any small high beetle on these frames. They've all been in the shop towel. Yeah, and they're in the shop towel, which is great. Our bees are very good at rounding and rounding them up. Yeah. A lot of times I find if you open up a hive and you don't, if, if they're really agitated, then they're, they're chasing small hive beetles. Yeah, and if we have small high beetle suspicions, well, you can freeze these down, can't you, as well, to help kill any larvae you can, before you put them back in. If you need to, but that was yeah. just freshly extracted. So. Okay, excellent. And just put the towel on as well. See, we've given this queen more space now. You can see how prolific she was. The, the, the battle here is really managing the colonies to, to be super strong, but to stop them swarming. So you have to do a lot of work, be in them all the time. So these feeders that come with it, they are twin feeders, and if you have partitions, you could just feed one side if you wanted to. Um, they do fit on absolutely perfectly, and they close the box off beautifully. You don't have to use the feeders, but if you've got them, it's always an advantage if you need them. I and they like make... to use the feeders because otherwise they'll end up building. Yeah, if you don't put on, they build comb, obviously. Mm -hmm. But you fill the feeders up with uh, syrup if you want, and you can turn them around to feed with candy if you wanted to. So they're really dynamic. And it's just an amazing little hive. It's all made of plastic. It's food grade plastic. Food grade plastic, yeah. And um, I was cleaning some yesterday and they pressure wash off fantastically. Um, it really is a superb piece of kit. There's no painting, there's nothing to do. You just yeah. use them. And if they're you get a slime out, you can just clean it off and start again. The okay, frames are all reusable. Way. And then this would be, the, this would be the, the tray that would go in the bottom. Okay. And the small high beetles will just end falling right into that tray and okay. pull them out and squish a lot of them. Brilliant. Excellent. There are a few bees under there because once the tray's in there the bees are not able to get back into the Yeah they're out there. The tray section. Brilliant. And if you know we were running queens we could open the open different the compartments back, up yeah. Side. Or you, you can use this as a queen excluder. But they're really great for when you have to move your hives somewhere else because you can completely close the entire yeah, box. Yeah, brilliant. They are so adaptable. And the other thing is we didn't talk about is if you want to add a second tier on, mm -hmm. you can put uh, take the roof off, take the feeder off, and put a second box on to give you 14 frames. Correct. That's correct, yeah. yeah. So it's really adaptable. So you, re if you're really in a huge flow and you can't get to your colonies and they're stacking it in, you can give them more space. So that's really great. Very good. Thanks for that. So we're back in the shade of the bee house uh, where all these wonderful AZ hives are working away furiously in this Hawaiian heat and this Hawaiian humidity. It's just wonderful. When you're in here, the experience you have is one that I can't uh, reciprocate anywhere else I've been. It's like you have hives on both sides of you that are just mm -hmm. buzzing and you feel you're almost mm -hmm. like feeling the energy and the noise. The it's incredible. Ambrosia. Yeah. It's wonderful. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the few things we went through. It was great fun being out here in Hawaii again. These uh, are truly wonderful hives to be uh, around and work with. So and the bees are awesome, aren't they? They really are. Mm -hmm. They really are gentle bees and they are so, so prolific. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Bye for now and Aloha. speak to you again soon. Aloha. Bye. Bye.